Roger. Yeah. What I've been wondering. Yeah. Don't take this the wrong way, but you are knocking on now. Yeah. I'm not. How, how do you how do you get the motivation to just carry on? Because I know after a job, the stress of it kills me, and I I, I just wonder what I'm doing this for. You know. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Do you know what? The, the stress of money, the stress of clients, the yeah. physical, the way it takes its toll on your body. Yeah. How, how? I mean, yeah. you're. A bit older than me. I am considerably older. I could be your dad, actually. You could you be my that? dad. I could be your dad. My dad's dead. I know. How old was he? He was 62. Was How old so would he be now? He was born in 52. Right. Exactly. So there you go. Me. There you go. They oh, can work out. it out. So just consider me your dad, all right? <laughs> Father to son conversation here. Okay. When I started as self-employed, I thought I'll give it a year. You know, see how it goes, give it a year. You can't sack yourself when you're self-employed, you know. <laughs> However bad it gets, and I've been home at like two o'clock in the morning on a horrendous plumbing job everything's gone wrong get home at two o'clock in the morning no i've got to get up the following morning go out again i can't do this i can't carry on doing this but a good night's sleep is everything mm. that really is because the worst problems in the world look better after you've had a bit of a sleep you know and very often i'm struggling in a job and i really just can't get out because this is terrible maybe i can't work something out go home go to sleep come back the next day it, the problem's half straight away it just doesn't you know sometimes you just oh why did i find this so hard last night midnight or whatever so you can't overdo it mate I, I, the other thing that i've always said um and i want to play my violin but when i was a kid we didn't have many holidays we had two family holidays in my whole childhood and i was determined when i had kids that holidays would be a priority mm. it didn't matter if they were posh holidays or not but the holidays would be priority. So doesn't matter how busy I am, doesn't matter how broke I am, the idea to take the kids away, have a break. And I found that that kind of thing just recharges. See, I've you know. never been like that. I've never been one to spend loads of money on things I wanted, just bought the stuff I needed, never had holidays. I've just focused on work, paying off my mortgage. You never had I holidays? Thought, no, what, you never. You haven't bothered with them? No, never. Really? Yeah. How does never. your wife feel about that? She's so sensible, Jen. Do you know it's what? So stressful. Work. Do you remember seeing Fred Dibner? Did you used to watch yeah. Fred Dibner? Mm. Now he Fred used to go away in his traction engine. He loved it. All the boys, all the old guys, all there, all laughing, having their beers and everything else, you know. And his wife was in this blooming traction engine, that trailer they pulled, mm. and the leak, the roof was leaking, and she was getting more and more. And he was just laughing and joking with the mate, saying, "Well, just put a bigger bucket under it; it'd be <laughs> all right." And all the rest, la ha ha, you know. And she went on holiday to Spain. He didn't want to go. Well, what do you want to go to Spain for? She mm. went on holiday, loved it so much, came back and divorced him. Yeah. So he said, oh, she's got big ideas. She's not interested in a traction engine. I, I, honestly, I think you ought to take Jen on holiday. And if you don't, I will. Yeah. <laughs> but that does sound like a bit like me because that's the way I've always oh. lived to my means and just focused on work and I yeah, try yeah. to do everything. I have these yeah. expectations that are so high, even if the job has gone beautifully well, everything's gone right, I can never hit that goal where I want to be. Yeah, I it think... me in. I think that not being happy with the work is quite a common thing, isn't it? We go away and all we can see is the mistakes, mm. you know, yeah, and don't ever draw true. attention to the mistakes. If there's a little mm. blemish, leave it. If a customer mentions it, mm. you've got to react. But if they don't, they'll go around going, oh, I'm sorry about this bit, sorry about that mm. bit, and all the rest of it. So that, I think, you know, is, is one of the things I've found over the years you know, hopefully it sounds like I make loads of mistakes but you know there are little things that you think oh I could have done that better but mm. I, one of the things I do say to customers is finish a job and I go to I'm pleased with the way that turned out I'm really pleased with the way that turned out because if you say that to them they tend to be you know it's well, like it when you walk in, confidence. it's like when you walk yeah. in somebody's house and you go oh this is a nice house isn't it or whatever you know it's like got a good feel about it and that immediately lifts their spirit mm. And then, you know, they lift is so but anyway, getting back to your problem, um, no holidays, working too hard, all the rest of it. I hope you don't mind me saying that, you know, you are diabetic, aren't you? Yeah, I'm a type one diabetic. Right, so that's the serious one. It is, yeah. That's not messing around. Now I've seen serious. that. I've seen like your blood sugars drop, you know. Yeah, I don't understand yeah. a lot about diabetes, but mm. I know that if you monitor it really carefully, mm. you've got an app on your phone. I have now, I've got a little sensor that I wear on my arm. And it alerts me when my sugars drop below 3.9. Right, the ideal scenario is we keep it between four and seven. So yeah. it's a fine equilibrium. Ooh. 
You've just oh, got to constantly monitor. You've got to inject insulin. So if it goes to 3.9, if you didn't inject, you've got to put an injection in, have you? Straight away. No, no, no. If it goes below 3.9, then you need to have sort of a sugary snack or yeah. some carbohydrate just to get it back up within a range. Yeah, yeah. It makes you tired. When your sugars are high, it makes you tired and lethargic. When your sugars are high, it makes you tired. Yeah. Does it? Is yeah. that, it works mm. that way around. Not, mm. Because I'm always thinking if I'm tired, it's low blood sugar. When your, your sugars are high, it just makes you, you have got no energy, you feel ah. sick. You, when your blood sugars are low, it's like you're, you're drunk. You, oh, you lose really? your coordination. It could be as simple as putting a screw in a bit of plasterboard. Yeah. It could be awkward to locate the tip of that yeah. And but your mind is so set on doing that last task, you're determined. And Jen is always with me because of the condition I've got, so she's always caring for me. Mm. And she says, Look, let's go and have something to eat. But you're so adamant that you don't want anyone to know that you've got a problem, you carry on. Yeah, yeah. And it makes it worse. Yeah. So but it's a well known thing. It. You try and hide it constantly. Yeah. And it's cool, it causes problems. I mean, I've, I've been diabetic since I was seven, so Blimey. 38 oh, years dear now. Idea. And when I was in my adolescence, I didn't look after it as well as I do now. When I well, they didn't have a technology, did they? They didn't you, have technology. You, you've got but brilliant technology now to, to alert yeah, you when it drops. And I have. I'll see you rush off, or not rush but off, but go to one side. I'm constantly, but I've got two young girls, a wife and a mortgage, and that's I've got to take care of all that. Yeah. So I've got to take care of myself really well. Yeah. But it's affecting my eyes. I don't drive anymore. Oh, and you blimey. can't imagine, yeah. as a builder... How hard that is. You cannot imagine. And that's why Jen is my full-time employee, because she does my driving. So sometimes she drops you off on site, sometimes she, she stays does, with yeah. you all day yeah. and gets stuck in doing the, she the does, work Well, not well. only... She always keeps an eye. I just say, if I do anything wrong, it doesn't look right, you just tell me, because I want this to be better than anyone else's work. Yeah, I, yeah. I want her to say, look, that's, yeah, that's not the, good enough, Sam. So make it better. Yeah. And that's what I push myself so hard. It's remarkable to find somebody like that who's actually that much got your back, and, you know, mm. that they're willing to come to work with you all day. Yeah, it's not, it's it, not ideal work for everyone, is it? You know, no, there, well, there must she, be days my, my wife is a one in a million because yeah, yeah. there aren't many women that have come to I've work seen on a load, I've site, seen you know? a load skip, so I've seen blimey, you know. She does, she, she, she's not afraid, is she? She is a grafter, mm. you know. She, she'll... Yeah. She could put a lot of men to shame, I think, you know, yeah, the way sure. her work ethic, but I think yeah. that's our yeah. work ethic. So you're a great team anyway. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's... But obviously you said to me the other week, you said, oh, I don't know, I can't keep this up, you know, because mm. if a job doesn't pay, I mean, that's one of the terrible mm. things is that the pricing, you know, we talk to so many people who, they're good tradesmen, mm. they're, they're, they're just bad at business and mm. it's blooming hard to make money. People, mm. people, watching this who think oh builders they're all making loads and loads of money they're all rogues they're all the rest mm. of it they don't realize that sometimes we work on a job and we come home with no money you know you it, just for one reason or another you made a cock up on the pricing it's materials have doubled since you started you know the customer won't mm. pay it you've got to finish and you come out of it having earned less money than you would if you were working you know, at McDonald's. I'm, I'm one of those people who, I didn't ever know what I wanted to do. I was really good at art. I was really good at woodwork and yeah. design. And I'd done a degree in industrial design and went and yeah. worked as a designer. That yeah. was where I come from. Yeah. So I went and did that. I couldn't get on with these guys. They were so, they lived in the clouds and I, I my dad was a carpenter and mm -hmm. he was very grounded. Yeah. He could solve any problem. Yeah. He was, he was so clever. Yeah. And I loved that. And that's how, so I chose to do building. I didn't fall yeah, into it, yeah, I chose yeah. it because I thought this is a great career. And I love it. And that's why I do it. And I put everything into it. And Jen's like, you've got to leave it. You can't, mm. you can't carry on. Yeah, because yeah. Oversupplying actually, that's, yeah, that's what they call I, it. And I, I do it constantly yeah. because I want to go just a little bit better and give the client the best. Yeah. Even if it means I only break even. Do you know what? Sometimes I, I've heard about that because I've got that rescuer syndrome as well. Mm. You know, it's like one of the reasons I do skill builder, answering all those questions from people all the time, is because I want to help people out. But I've I read something about that, and they reckon it's it's due to low self esteem, which surprised me. You know, that actually it's because you don't value yourself enough. Because if you value yourself enough, you don't have to oversupply. You go into to do a job like we're doing at the moment, lay a floor. You don't then have to fix the guy's leaking gutter. Mm. 
mm. but I can't leave it alone. I see a leaking gutter, and I'm I, oh, while I'm here, I do that. And of course, you don't get paid for it. I'm absolutely and guilty of it. And it, you should just we, walk away, really. It's so difficult when someone, they, it always seems like there's a crisis, and you're the man who could fix it know, for yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you think... It's irresistible, that, isn't it, in it a way? Is. Yeah, yeah. And if, so, and if they're elderly, you just want to help them. Sometimes it's where I go wrong. Yeah, well, but that's true. I mean... In business. I, I always said, I've said this before, but, you know, if I go around to some old lady's house, you know, do a bit of plumbing, it might be a tap washer or whatever, you know, and I'd realise that I was the only person she'd seen all week. Mm. You know, nobody's... Back in the day when the carers were nipping in and out, some old lady's sitting there on her own, and you think, I'm the first bit of company she's had all week. I can't just nip in, nip out... Change the tap washer. She offered me a cup of tea. Sit down, have a cup of tea. She start talking about her grandchildren and everything else. You're looking at it, you're thinking, blimey, it's an hour and a half gone by now. <laughs> am I going to charge her for an hour and a half or am I going to charge her for the 20 minutes it took to well, do the tap know, washer? But... Since Jen's been working for me, it's been really good because she's come from a, like she worked in a school, so she's used oh, to right, dealing okay. with people. And often, if you're working around an elderly lady and you've got this gruff builder who goes around and mm. it's a bit intimidating. Mm. I'm only a little guy and fairly well spoken, and I think they like us because we're, yeah, yeah. you know, they feel safe. Yeah. But Jen often yeah. listens to the stories, yeah. whereas then I can go and slip off and so, just say, yeah. I'm just going to okay. do this yeah, for yes. you. <laughs> and then by the time the story's finished, I've finished fixing the picture rail up or whatever it is, the picture, you know, so it does work quite well. And they that like her, obviously, the customers they think, really oh, you know, they're Jen. disappointed when you turn up on your own, of course, <laughs> on your bike. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, it's not a hereditary thing, diabetes, is it? It, it is, yeah. It is, it, so it your, dad didn't, one, your dad didn't my, die of it. No, my dad didn't, but it was on my dad's side. Oh, my, was it? One of my cousins, he actually he died when he was oh, 28. But and When I was 10, a doctor told me, if you don't stop the way you're carrying on, you'll be dead by the time you're 30. Yeah, and so I kind of reached 30 and I thought... Oh, you reached 30 now. <laughs> well, last week. Oh, yeah. It's my birthday soon. So. <laughs> I yeah. just have to look after myself, but it's, it's just with the stress of my work. When it goes well, I love my job and yeah. I love my life. Yeah, yeah. When it's, this, I mean, I've got an extension to start and I got a message today saying, can we go for the meeting? And it's so, now it's started to boil some of the next, you know, I filled in my job with little jobs, which are nice, you get in, you get out. Now I'm going to be in somewhere for two months dealing with a customer and this is their life saving so it's it's critical that we get it right yeah, yeah. and that's so stressful i think it's a great job the building you know in the building industry if you don't have to make money at it <laughs> as soon as you have to make money at it you know i've been working for my daughter don't mm. get a bean for that but mm. it's quite pleasant it's quite mm. nice for me to do it there's no stress mm. i haven't got to think oh you know like the week's gone by i haven't earned this i haven't earned that so in a way <laughs> if it were possible to separate those two things out. And so some people do because they go and work for somebody else, don't they? Let somebody else, the boss takes care of all that side of it. All they do is go to work every day, do their eight hours. And, and that's lovely. Home. Sometimes and they go and work for another builder. Yeah. And you do a day for them, a bit of uh, like a pergola or something. Mm. And you get in, you get out, you get paid. Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah, we're really. And it's just yeah. lovely doing yeah. that. And also, the other thing I'd say is that, you know, obviously you're working with your wife, that's great. But when you work on your own, mm. as I very often do, because I haven't got any friends, you know, but when, when, you, when you work on your own, um, it can get, you know, a bit daunting. I mean, it's great. I'm doing this job with you at the moment. It's, it's fantastic. A bit of company, a bit of laugh mm. and a joke, you know. And you just drive each other on, don't you? When you're flagging, I'm going, and then mm. vice versa. So I, I love that. I love so, having yeah. a work colleague that can... And, and plus, if you've got a different point of view, or you, you, you can overthink a lot of jobs, yeah. and you, you're looking at it, and you just can't see a, a sensible answer, and then someone else comes along, well, if you just do it like this, then they just see it from that yeah. other point of view. Yeah. And we've yeah. done it in there, you yeah. know. It's quite annoying when a customer does it. Though, it? When you go, well, <laughs> when that is go, annoying. Why aren't you doing it like this? And you go, oh, yeah, I just have to try and find an excuse, because <laughs> you know, completely overlook the fact, yeah, I could have done that yeah, anyway. Yeah, hopefully that doesn't but, happen too much. No, it's good. It's good to have a laugh and a joke. And I mean, mm. I've got to say, you know, all this thing about, um, you know, bullying on, on you know, workplaces, mm. we get MPs, don't we? That, you know, the I mean, civil servants having a go, the minister gets sacked for... for for bullying, you know, mm. and I look at it and I think, what do they call bullying? They've said a few rough, mm. 
on the building site, that's going on every day, oh, isn't it? If you do something wrong, people give you a complete banter. mouthful. And, uh, well, you know, you do something wrong, you get bought up. There's no mm. line manager that you go and complain to, is there? It's just part and parcel of the game. You just toughen up a little bit. I like that. I like the fact that it's not a massive amount of political correctness. Mm. It's not like, oh, he said that to me. And so just get on with your work, mate. That's all mm. that matters. If you do your work, you do your work well, the rest of it, you know, we all know there's abrasive characters on the building site. I could be one. You know, you, you rub along, don't you? You all get along and, and at the end it's, that's the thing I enjoy most about it is it's, mm. it's almost like going back in time for me, you know, to the day when we could just have a laugh and a joke and people weren't uptight about it. And mm, that's true. Examining what you said, you know. Oh, you can't say that. You can't call it a manhole anymore. Got to call it an inspection chamber. I'll just go away, please. Yeah, there's a lot of that, isn't there, that goes on. <laughs> oh, blimey, it sounds like the, the foreman's up. I think we better get Let's going. Let's drag on.